Hello. Um, in this recording or this class period, if you prefer, I'm we're going to start talking about how to solve polynomial equations. I want to emphasize that in spite of my not being in the classroom today, you are expected to watch the video, you are expected to do the homework, um, and you will, come test time, be expected to be able to do problems such as the ones on the homework. So, with that kind of out of the way, let me get my video off just because you won't be able to see me anyway when I'm standing in front of the whiteboard. And let me reiterate my goal, which I stated to be solving polynomial equations. So, to clarify what I mean by that, we have a polynomial, we want to set it equal to zero. So, we did this exact thing for quadratic using the quadratic formula. The qu um, quadratics are second degree polynomials, their degree two polynomials, but we want to be able to do this in general. We want to be able to do this no matter what the degree of the polynomial is. Well, that turns out to be a problem. There is no general polynomial version of the quadratic formula, by which I mean there is no general formula that you can use for general polynomials. That was, that, that's a mathematical theorem. This isn't, we haven't found a formula, this isn't I don't want to explain the form to the because it's complicated. This is no form to the exists and no form to the can ever exist. That, uh, that was proven long ago by a French mathematician named Everett Galois. He, uh, sort of interesting character. Um, a political activist. He uh, revolutionized mathematics at an offensively young age, then got killed in a duel, apparently over a woman. So, um, so since the, um, moving on, so since there is no general form to the, what can you do? And the real answer to that is that you can use technology. We'll learn a little about factoring and polynomial division in this course, but the reality is that that is an extremely limited 
way of solving these polynomial equations. For almost any polynomial that appears in the real world and is not specifically designed by a textbook author to work out nicely, you're probably going to have to do this, to use technology. And I'll teach you to do this on a TI-84 calculator. And this also will work with a TI-83 calculator. And let's present the method of um, what we're trying to do. Let's present this method via example. That's that p of x equal 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 1. And let's state as our goal that we want to solve p of x equals zero. Another way you could frame this, another very standard way of saying this, is that we want to find the roots of the polynomial. And since I am said that I am going to teach you how to do this on our calculator, let's get the calculator up. All right, here we go. I went ahead and entered the uh, polynomial into the calculator where up in y equals. So this is exactly where you'd go if you wanted to graph the polynomial. And in fact, we do want to graph the polynomial. This is a graphical method that we're learning. So I press the graph button and we're looking for the places where the polynomial hits the x-axis. Those are the roots. And we see three of them. There's a root here, if you can see my cursor. And there's a root here. And there's a root over here. And good news bad news. Um, the good news is that finding these roots is almost identical to finding maximum and minimum values. That's also the bad news because it's my impression that a lot of students didn't like finding maximum and minimum values. But here we are again in the calc menu. Second calc. And now instead of a minimum or a maximum, we want to know when the polynomial is zero. So we select zero. And you see exactly the same sort of instructions that you saw when you were looking for maxes and mins. You see we're being asked for a left bound. Well, this polynomial has three roots. Let's find this one. We move around with the arrow keys. We get so that we're to the left of the root. We press enter. And now we're being asked for the right bound. OK, fair enough. We'll scroll so that we're to the right 
of the root. Remember, the root we're looking for is here. We press enter, and now guess. So left bound, right bound, guess, the exact same things we inputted when we were looking for extrema, we now input to find this root. When x equals 3.4581988, the polynomial is zero. So this value of x is a solution to p of x equals zero. We can find the other roots the same way. Let me, uh, let me zoom in a little. Sorry, this arrow uh, keeps hitting the wrong directional buttons. Okay, so this root, this root. Now that we can see them both clearly, it's just a matter of repeating that process twice. We go to calc, we select zero. We can start with this root. So we'll go to the left of the root that we're looking for. Then we'll go to the right of the root that you're, we're looking for, and then we press enter. And here's another root when x is about negative 0 0.3599, the polynomial is 0. Third root, same method. Go to the left of it. To the right of it. Then go near it. And here is our third root. 0 0.4017212 for that value of x, y is 0. And for our first in, well, what would have been in the class work, but is now just homework, this is all you're going to do. It's admittedly not the most exciting thing in the world, but repetition is a useful learning tool, even if it's not always the funnest learning tool. So in the same um, video, sorry, in the same announcement that led you to this video, there will be a link to the homework as well. And Ideally, you will turn that in tomorrow, that is, turn it in Thursday. Um, of course, the possibility exists that I will be put on this jury, and then, um, then I won't be there Thursday, and you'll, um, you'll have to give it to me Monday. But we'll hope that that doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> And maybe I should be more excited than I am about fulfilling my patriotic duty. Um, but in any event, um, what happens, happens. If, if, I, um, if I'm not in Thursday, I'll post another announcement. There will be another video. There will be another assignment. And you can give me both the assignments on Monday. But I plan on being there tomorrow. I will explicitly tell you. I will send a class-wide email if that is not the case.